after Tropical Storm Marco impacting the northern Gulf Coast as Tropical Storm Laura now becomes the primary concern with potential to hit the same area as Marco as a Category 2 or perhaps Category 3 hurricane. The latest models are in and we have it for you live on Track in the Tropics. Hey there, buddy. JB Buno here with you live in your hurricane headquarters, being joined once again by Track in the Tropics meteorologist Ian Oliver in the top right-hand portion of your screen. And then joining us, our guest meteorologist today from WGNO in New Orleans. We're going to be hearing from Hank Allen here momentarily, as well as WROC chief meteorologist Eric Snydel joining us there in the bottom left-hand portion of your screen. Marco and Laura are no longer co-features here when we're talking about these two systems. One as we were making a boxing reference earlier, Ian, off stream. We were talking about how they're not co-features anymore. One, the undercard, the other, the main event. And Laura really is the main event, even though Marco is the current storm that's dumping precipitation on the northern Gulf Coast. We'll send things over to you to kind of break down the latest in this 2 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Yeah, JB, I know you're a big boxing guy, and you have to reach people. You have to speak people's languages. And what we're talking about, we were worried about initially, was that big one-two punch. Now it's really kind of like the first fight of the night and the main event in what could be Laura. So we were waiting for the 2 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center before we joined you here on Track in the Tropics. We've got and some good news related to Marco over the last 12 hours or so. Woke up this morning, look at the satellite data, and you could tell that this was a system that was being bullied badly uh, by wind shear. You saw the convection, the showers, the thunderstorms associated with that circulation offset from the center by about 50 miles, and that was an indication that it was undergoing strong shear. Thankfully, this occurring before it reached land, before landfall. Latest update from the National Hurricane Center, as confirmed partially from aircraft data, the Hurricane Hunters has maximum sustained winds with Marco at about 40 miles per hour. So we're talking about barely a tropical storm at this point, barely reaching that criteria. And the bulk of those gustier winds off to the north and the east of that center of circulation because of the same shear I was just talking about. So the good news, some new headlines with this bulletin was tropical storm warnings and storm surge warnings are canceled. These are related to Marco. So I want to get to the graphics here and show you what we're looking at with some of this. There you go. That's the radar picture. You see where the National Hurricane Center has the fix of this storm. All that heavy rain is way offset to the north and east across the panhandle, up into portions of uh, Alabama. Some of that rain trying to make it to uh, Mississippi at this point. But even uh, towards uh, the Louisiana Gulf Coast, where the circulation is fairly close, we're not seeing a whole lot in terms of rainfall right now. This is the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Now, we didn't get a new track at uh, 2 o'clock. This comes from 11 a.m., but already at 11 a.m., they were talking about the possibility of this degenerating to a remnant low as early as tonight or tomorrow. So Marco is in bad shape, still has some threats along with it, some heavy rainfall associated with some of that tropical moisture. But the focus now really needs to shift down to Tropical Storm Laura, which longer term does have the potential to be a very dangerous and impactful tropical system. Right now, maximum winds of around 60 miles per hour. And if you've been watching over the last couple of days, it's actually done a fairly remarkable job of holding itself together while dealing with what was significant land interaction right over Hispaniola, right over a portion of Cuba. In the next day now, it has one more area over western Cuba that it needs to move over. If that inner core can emerge into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico in pretty good shape, there isn't a whole lot at that point to weaken the system as it makes its trek across the central portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And that's why you can see all that intensification reflected in the forecast from the National Hurricane Center up to a Category 2 storm by Wednesday evening as it's approaching somewhere in the Louisiana or Texas Gulf, Co Gulf Coast. The possibility to being su suggested by some forecast models that there is some even more upside to that intensity forecast. We know that's always a risk with a system over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. That's essentially hurricane fuel this time of the year in late August. This is the spread in forecast models, and I wanted to show you these one, because we always want to show these. It's, it's something very interesting to look at when trying to project the path of a system. But we're still talking about Wednesday night for a possible landfall. There's a decent amount of spread in these forecast models, including po possibly even far west than you're seeing on your screen, Gulf uh, Coast of Texas, all the way up into Louisiana. And when you're talking about a major hurricane, where exactly it makes landfall is one of the most important things that we can consider. I mentioned those very warm Gulf temperatures. So, Hank, I know you guys have been staring at both of these systems for days now. The news with Marco, good at least, but you can't let your guard down at all just yet. 
No, you're 100% right. I mean, look, Marco uh, petered out, which is great. Really a non-issue for our area. I think we'll see uh, maybe a few of those tropical showers coming in tomorrow as the center moves past. And, you know, maybe a tornado threat uh, with a couple of those if they're able to, to get strong enough in a feeder band or two tomorrow with the center moving in and you get a little sun and some instability. But in general, Marco is a non-issue here. I mean, we talked about the coastal flooding. There's probably going to be a little bit. Uh, but this center of circulation has just been, as you mentioned, just completely eroded away uh, with the storms all the way up to the northeast. I mean, look, look at that radar right there. Charleston getting a lot more rain than we will here in southeast Louisiana. So, of course, that's what happens sometimes when these systems get sheared off like that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we all agree and, and probably just about all of us have been saying over the past two or three days that uh, Laura is going to be the business end of this. You know, my big concern uh, a couple of days ago was it looked like you could get Marco and then Laura 1-2 uh, over our area. So uh, the good news is, at least with Marco fading out, the governor had mentioned this earlier, that uh, we're not going to have to use any sort of cleanup crews or emergency rescues or anything like that or have any damage to go around uh, from Marco while trying to get to Laura. So we'll be starting with a clean slate because uh, it definitely looks like we're going to have some damage associated with that. And I think people really, uh, as you mentioned, all across the Gulf Coast in that spread need to be aware of this, need to be making plans to uh, potentially have to evacuate, probably if you're west of Morgan City at this point over towards Lake Charles. And, uh, you know, we'll watch that center, see where it comes off of Cuba, just to make sure there's nothing funny with the jump in the, in the track or anything like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's been a while since we've seen one of these storms really intensify. We've had a lot of them in the Gulf that just have not done much. I mean, think about Michael, obviously, a couple of years ago. But otherwise, there hasn't been a whole lot of activity in the Gulf that's really strengthened. And I think Laura's going to break that trend. And uh, it's going to be a pretty significant scenario here. And, you know, look, for our area, I'm saying we're getting more storm surge out of Laura than we did out of Marco because it's not doing anything. You're going to have a big system in the Gulf, big flow around that. So a lot of the Louisiana coast is going to get some surge from this and then obviously potentially a devastating surge closer to the center. I'm going to hop in here really quickly and remind everybody that you see the hashtags on your screen. Hashtag Hey Hank, hashtag Hey Ian, hashtag Hey Eric. You can use those hashtags to ask a question to one of our three experts on the stream today. Again, WGNO in New Orleans, Hank Allen joining us from Louisiana, WFLA's Ian Oliver and WROC's Chief Meteorologist Eric Snydel joining us uh, from upstate New York. Ian, any other notes here as we look at this two o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center? No, no, Hank said it. Hank said it best. The news with Marco has been great. That was expected over the next over the last couple of days. Thankfully, that weakening, the rapid weakening really happened before it made it to shore. But now we're going to turn our attention to a, a completely different environment. And Eric, we should talk about a little bit about uh, people wondering, hey, we saw Marco fizzle in the Gulf. Why don't we expect that uh, from Laura? It looks like the, the upper level situation, completely different, much more favorable as Laura's uh, moving into the Gulf. It is. And it's a logical question to ask with this, where you're going to have folks in Louisiana who go, well, you know, we had this thing that has petered out over the course of the last 24 hours. Why are we expecting Laura to not do the same thing? The dynamics here of why Marco has decided to kind of weaken is a completely different environment as we move forward over these next few days. When you look at the satellite presentation of this, uh, at least with Marco right now, all of that shear out of the southwest, uh, causing that updraft, that core of that hurricane, or at least what was a hurricane, to continue to fizzle out here. Uh, hurricanes do not like shear, and uh, that's a big thing that is going on now with Marco. Now, here's the catch with this. That shear is not going to stay there. The atmosphere is fluid. Things are changing with every hour, every passing day. By the time we get Laura to reemerge into the Gulf of Mexico, all of that shear that has been hurting Marco is largely going to dissipate. It's going to be out of here. So we present ourselves with an environment of, number one, really warm water, number two, a lack of shear. And once we can get this core of Laura, which you see right now, it's got one more hurdle. It still has to clear Cuba, and it likely will. Once that inner core then gets uh, re-exposed into the Gulf of Mexico, you've got yourself an existing environment that is not what it is right now. It'll be a different animal. It'll be a different ball game. So we do think Laura is very likely going to intensify. Uh, if you've been following some of the discussions here from the National Hurricane Center, well, it's not implicitly listed in their actual forecast numbers, uh, there is a possibility here that this undergoes at least some period of rapid intensification. You see the uh, sea surface temperatures there. That's bathwater, folks, in the Gulf of Mexico. 85s, 86s, middle 80s water temperatures is certainly conducive for this. And 
when you factor in, there's not a whole lot of dry air there in the Gulf. Uh, you know, Laura is going to end up being the big story here. And, and I certainly think that it is wonderful that Marco has weakened, you know, for a lot of folks along Louisiana, that's a best case scenario. But we don't want those folks to be complacent with this, thinking, well, hey, we dodged a bullet with this one. We're going to be good to go. And from that standpoint, this might actually end up being a really good thing. We have prepped a whole lot of folks along the Gulf Coast here with a one-two punch. We got away with the one not being that big of a deal, but everybody there remains weather aware. They know what's going on, and now we're ready for number two, and that number two is likely going to be the one here. We're going to be making metaphors all day, but almost the appetizer, a very small appetizer to what could be the main course. We're getting a lot of questions here again. Using the hashtags on your screen, hashtag hey Hank, hashtag hey Ian, hashtag hey Eric. Really quickly for the commenters that are asking uh, from WFLA's Facebook page in Tampa, Ian, people who are asking, is there any impacts potentially in the state of Florida? Can we give them a quick answer? No, no, not for us outside of it's a little bit breezy. In fact, tomorrow's actually likely going to be a bit drier because we've got this nice breeze out of the southeast. We've got a heat advisory today for the Tampa Bay area, noon to six with feels like temperatures in excess of 110 at times. You know, our only defense against heat in August is showers and thunderstorms. We need them to help cool us off a little bit. Uh, we'll actually see a limited coverage of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow because of what that breezy southeast wind does to our sea breeze. Kind of keeps it pinned right along the west coast. Can't get off the coast, move inland, and generate a better coverage of showers and thunderstorms. So we actually dropped our rain chance tomorrow down to 30% Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's kind of fringe impacts from what our big circulations, tropical systems. But if you're looking for direct impacts from Marco or Laura, uh, they're not coming here. They're obviously head into a different portion of the Gulf Coast. Floridians counting their lucky stars when we're talking about two systems here to the end of August. Neither one are going to have significant impacts on the Sunshine State, so that's good news for us here. But again, focusing on our friends in Louisiana and you know, on the Texas coast, on the Alabama uh, coast, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast as well. And we're following Facebook questions also coming in from WGNO's Facebook page in New Orleans where Hank Allen is. And we have Sean asking, hashtag, hey, Hank, any chance Laura could swing more to the east if a southwest Louisiana landfall, what would we see perhaps more on the north shore? So that's a question that we have coming in for you, Hank. Yeah, that's uh, look, I mean, that's the possibility that we're concerned with, certainly. And that's why we're saying, you know, let's wait another day or so. Let's get this past Cuba so we make sure we don't have some sort of center jumping around on us here uh, to where you would end up uh, maybe getting a little shift in the track, uh, similar to what we saw a couple of days ago and actually shifted more south and west because the center reformed a while back. So as it stands right now, mainly coastal issues here with that storm surge, if that track were to hold. But uh, look, it's a great question, and I think it's one that uh, we definitely need to follow here because you can see a couple of these models do bring it a little closer. Keep in mind, a very large system by the time it gets here, probably. So if you did get a track closer to the Chapalaya there, uh, maybe up through Lafayette, you'd be more in play on the North Shore where uh, Sean's talking about southeast Louisiana in general for some of those feeder bands, some of that heavy rain threat. Uh, tornado threat on the eastern side and probably even more storm surge. So I expect at least at minimum a storm surge along the uh, Gulf Coast out of this uh, for us here as, uh, you know, more than what we've seen with Marco. You know, North Shore storm surge, we'd have to see if it moved a little bit closer to us. And uh, you definitely need to keep watching this over the next couple of days. Uh, we're not out of the woods, as we've been saying, really anywhere probably from the Mississippi coast around through Texas especially. Uh, not totally out of the woods until we can get that locked down a little bit more. And, and I think Eric makes a great point in the sense that, you know, at least everybody has preparations in place now. We've got uh, the sandbags out. We have uh, the, the temporary levees out uh, that have been built uh, in preparation to Marco. And we have uh, the supplies. A lot of people have bought supplies in preparation of these two storms. So the good news is we're a lot farther ahead in the preparation game, uh, not only in southeast Louisiana, but across the state than we normally would be. Uh, two or three days out from a major system making landfall. So that's the good news. And now we just have to uh, watch this here as it goes through the next couple of days. Hank, we're going to leave you on screen here for another second because we have Stephanie Bruce in the WGNO Facebook Live comment section asking, what, hashtag, hey, Hank, what can we expect with Laura in Gulfport, Mississippi? Mm, you know, in Gulfport, I would expect very little at the moment. Uh, and again, as that track shifts farther to the east, uh, that could impact you a little bit more. But Gulfport is far enough to the east right now where if this current track held in place, uh, I would expect very minimal issues.
We have another question coming in. It's a great question, and it's a hashtag hey JB question from Nicole Noel in the Facebook Live comment section. I'm going to throw it to, to Eric Snydel up there in, in Rochester, and it's hashtag hey JB. Why does Marco curve west and Laura is tracking east? And she says, just wondering. And, and these, these storms, you know, again, this is a great opportunity for us here on Track in the Tropics with all the meteorologists that join the program to go over weather and the, the fundamentals of tropical development because we have these storms that are vel- developing in similar circumstances at similar times, but curving in different directions. So, Eric, maybe we yep. could enlighten one of our viewers here, Nicole, in the Facebook Live comment section. Sometimes it's best to think of these almost like you've got a sailboat out on the water. The direction that that sailboat is going to end up going is steered by the winds. And the winds are always different speeds and different directions through different heights of the atmosphere, which does play into, by the way, uh, some of the inherent track issues that we've got with Tropical Storm Laura on where she is eventually going to end up going. So the way this typically works, and uh, one of the issues that uh, we'll no doubt be watching over these next few days, when Laura gets in the Gulf of Mexico, she's being steered around an upper level ridge of high pressure that's parked way off to the east. Uh, One of the problems with this, when you try to figure out where the track of the storm is going, the intensity actually plays a role in where the track is going to be going. So to kind of think of it like this, a stronger hurricane is going to have more meat on the bone. That hurricane is going to have a core that goes higher up into the atmosphere. So it takes up more real estate. It has more influence and it's going to be picked up more by some of those upper level winds. So for example, if Laura over the next few days ends up being a weaker system than forecast, some of the lower level and mid-level winds are going to be predominant. And you will likely end up seeing a track that's maybe a bit farther to the right, farther to the east from where the National Hurricane Center has it. On the other side of this, if Laura ends up becoming something much more significant, the structure in the core of that gets more of an influence from upper level winds, which will probably want to push it more off to the west. So with that sailboat analogy, how high up this gets, how strong it gets, actually plays into where this thing is going to go. And you start to get a feel and an understanding of why. You know, we don't just give you one center line before the track is going to go. They give you that whole cone of uncertainty because of all of those teeny tiny variables. That sailboat with all the different wind speeds and wind directions, a lot of different nuances here with how that goes. And again, we made this point earlier too, uh, with where Marco is going right now, the environment there is very different right now than what it's gonna be in 48 and 72 hours. And all of that is that sailboat kind of wind. They move around, they're always jumping. It's a good thing that the three individuals you see on your screen, other than myself, were paying attention in atmospheric sciences in college because I certainly wasn't paying enough attention Great to have Hank Allen, Ian Oliver, and Eric Snydel here joining us, everybody providing a lot of different expertise on Laura and Marco. The next question comes in for WFLA meteorologist Ian Oliver. This one we can actually throw up on screen. It comes from Karina Santana. Hashtag, hey, Ian, what are the chances that Laura may do a Charlie on us? As Charlie with light shear and all turn to Florida at the last minute, just wondering is the comment here from Karina. My guess is Karina lived in Florida in 2004 then. The very active seasons of 04 and 05 kind of left their mark a bit on the psychology of it. This is no Charlie by any means. Steve Jervy and I have had the conversation about Charlie a thousand times. People talking about pulling a Charlie, making a hard right, and, and moving towards us. That, that's not going to happen, uh, thankfully. You saw the forecast spread. I, I would think the margin of error with this system is likely more to the west than it is to the east. That would be my my thinking at this point. But we would essentially need something like a trough, something like what's pushing on Marco and weakening it right now to essentially kick that system uh, back to the east. That's what we saw with Charlie. There's nothing there uh, to push the system back towards us. That was something, if you were watching over the last several days, early in the evolution of both Laura and Marco, we were thinking that this could be a close pass or an impact to the Tampa Bay area. This is not the one that we need to worry about locally, thankfully, but we still have a whole lot of season left. September the 10th being the peak of the season. So what is that? Two and a half weeks out at this point to get to this statistical peak of hurricane season. But unfortunately, we're just getting to that point of the season where we've had enough summer to really warm up the sea surface temperatures. Most of major systems happen from essentially this point 
on. So we got a lot of way left to go in this season. We'll, of course, keep a very close eye on Laura as it goes by, but nothing to worry about locally with this one. We're going to end out here on some kind of more rapid fire questions because we're missing so many hundreds of hashtag hey JB, hashtag hey Hank, hashtag hey Eric, hashtag hey Ian comments that are coming in here. So we're going to try to get to as many of these as we can and possible in the last few minutes here of track in the tropics. Uh, we have some viewers joining us, uh, Brody in Birmingham, Alabama. And then we also had uh, Michael Barr talking about Southeast Alabama. And then uh, also one more, I had one more Alabama comment. And maybe I'll throw this either Eric or Hank's way. Uh, Tiffany Reyes joining us from Gulf Shores, Alabama, my own stopping grounds, not too far away from Mobile, the Alabama Gulf Coast. Eric, Hank, you want to hop in here? What do we say to our viewers that are commenting from the southern or even central portions of Alabama? Well, I'll start with this one. Uh, it's raining there now across parts of coastal Alabama along the panhandle of Florida, too. But, uh, you know, I really think with this one, with the current path of where Laura is projected to go, uh, impacts are going to end up being minimal. You know, if we do have a stronger hurricane in the Gulf, you're going to have some higher waves, some higher chops, some higher rip current risk. But if you've got a beach vacation in Mobile or Gulf Shores, uh, it would have to take, I think, a, a shift to the east for more significant impacts to be felt there. Uh, and even with where the track uh, appears to be going right now, even just from a rainfall standpoint, I don't know that you would have a whole lot. Frankly, you would probably end up uh, enjoying some of the weather that you would get from this. You may get some increased cloud cover, maybe a few tropical rain showers that do pivot their way ashore. And this time of year in Alabama, uh, you're looking for anything to offer you some rainfall and to take the edge off of the heat. But um, Alabama right now, we don't want to completely let our guard down just because uh, there's always room for error with this. But based on the current projections, uh, this would not be the one that you would have to worry about. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here from Elizabeth Richard on WGNO's Facebook page. Uh, and Elizabeth asking, uh, hashtag, hey, Eric, what made Marco die so quickly? And maybe you can hop in, Eric. And then I have a question for you, Hank, coming up next. Sure. Two words, wind shear. That was the big one here. There's a lot of wind shear. If you think of uh, you light a candle and you have the smoke that goes straight up, that's what a hurricane likes. It wants no shear. It wants that air going up to be nice and confined vertically, straight up and down. If you blow on that uh, smoke up there, you see how the smoke will start to tilt a little bit? That's all this was. Uh, it loses its heat engine when you do that. And that wind shear is kind of a uh, chop the head off of this thing, uh, proverbially. And th that's exactly what you want to see with this. Um, that will not exist, by the way, with uh, Laura as it starts to go into the Gulf of Mexico. But that was the big difference. High wind shear existing right now along the Gulf Coast. That should not be a factor over the course of the next few days, which is why you have a weakening Marco and what is expected to be a strengthening Laura. We have uh, two more questions to get to here, one for Hank and one for Ian. And uh, Chris Hardy uh, with the hashtag. Oh, excuse me. I will, Chris, we'll get to your comment here really in, in just a moment. I want to get to this one question here that just came in from Christy Martin. And we, gotta, we have to just kind of perhaps pump the brakes here just for a second. But may, let, let, me, let me ask the question. Christy Martin, hashtag hey, Hank, is there a possibility for Laura to pull a Hurricane Katrina? So ah. Katrina is, is in a completely different conversation when we're talking about hurricanes. But so I, we have to caution our viewers when we're when we're talking right. about different name systems that are of historic magnitude. Mm -hmm. But what do we say to Christy, Hank? I mean, look, you know, you can't write it off for significant impacts. Let's say that. And obviously the Katrina comparison is going to be natural coming up on the universe uh, on the uh, anniversary weekend here, 15 year anniversary. Uh, I would say no at the moment for the New Orleans area, and uh, that was such a rarity, and there's been so many changes since then on the levee systems and all the local impacts that uh, I would say a very minimal impact in terms of a Katrina-like system for the New Orleans area. You'd have to have a major shift and big-time strengthening. Uh, but I do think you're going to see, you know, potentially a major system in the western part of the state. And unlike Katrina that was weakening at landfall, you may actually see a strengthening storm at landfall with Laura in the western part of the state. And the intensifying storms are always the one that causes the most problems. And so New Orleans, you know, not really a big issue with that at this point. But uh, look, if you're west of Lafayette, let's say in uh, Louisiana, certainly the coastal areas, uh, it could be a, uh, you know, a very significant system. And you never want to compare storms to another one. Uh, but uh, let's just say you need to be prepared for uh, some big issues out there. And we keep coming back also to Florida and the context is the reason. We, we of course, your hurricane headquarters here in Tampa, Florida with Ian and myself, and we bring in guest meteorologists such as Hank and Eric here onto the program. And 
the Floridians are very, very hyper focused and really honed in on the tropics when we're talking about, you know, in a very active time of the hurricane season. So going back here to the final question coming in from WFA's Facebook page here in Florida it comes from Chris Hardy, hashtag Hey Ian, watching from Naples, Florida. And we just had a strong storm just come through not too long ago with some pretty gusty winds. Chris wanting to know, is this from Laura? No, no, not directly. Uh, you, you could make the argument that the general flow, it, it is breezy today as we're getting squeezed between that circulation off to our south and Laura, off to our west and Marco, and that strong area of high pressure that's actually helping uh, to push Laura into the Gulf. So that that difference in air pressure does create the wind. And we're seeing breezy conditions today because of that. Likely a bit breezier uh, down by you in Naples uh, with that. We've had some wind gusts today, 20 to 25 miles per hour across the Tampa Bay area. My guess is down by you, maybe up, up into the 30s, 30, 35 miles per hour. So in a sense, it's connected, but I would not call that a direct uh, impact from Laura. Something we should point out too before we, uh, mm -hmm. before we close it up, JB, is elsewhere, in the Atlantic, it looks like no new development over over the next five days. So that's something that we should point out. This is this is going back to uh, last week when we were talking about Josephine and Kyle as a duo, and then we were looking ahead to a bunch of new tropical waves that were moving across the tropical Atlantic. We don't have any more like we did last week to, to, to tease ahead to, thankfully, because we have what could be a serious system in lower to track very closely over the next few days. Very rarely do we have something to hit the applause button for here on tracking the tropics, but uh, no significant third storm behind these two is good news for us here in the southeastern United States as we wrap up this edition of Tracking the Tropics again. Marco now dissipating, still a, a concern, of course, but Laura now the main event, as we called it earlier, the one that you really need to be honed in on, especially if you're in that northern Gulf Coast area, if you are towards Houston, Louisiana, the Mississippi Gulf Coast, the Alabama Gulf Coast, even uh, the western ends of the Florida Panhandle. It's a really good time for you to really stay in touch with your local meteorologists, such as Hank Allen. It's great to have the perspective of Eric Snydel, the chief meteorologist up there at WROC in Rochester, providing his perspective as well ian oliver a local meteorologist here for wfla in tampa your local meteorologist keeping you informed every step of the way especially during a very active time of the year the 2020 hurricane season really in full swing as we get close to ending out the month of august and into september where we anticipate more tropical development in the weeks and months ahead i really want to thank wgno chief meteorologist hank allen for taking time he's been very very busy doing television cut-ins being part of your forecasts on WGNO and then of course Eric Snydel the chief meteorologist at ROC joining us from upstate New York appreciate his perspective and as always tracking the tropics meteorologist Ian Oliver in the top right hand portion of your screen we will be back with more updates in the days ahead as they become available from the National Hurricane Center here on tracking the tropics to all of our viewers who have been watching all episode long thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you soon next time here from your hurricane headquarters on tracking the tropics Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.